This is Bigger Questions with your host, Robert Martin. Welcome to Bigger Questions, recorded live in Melbourne. And today's big question, what happened when Santa learned the gospel? We're recording a special Bigger Questions episode today at the launch of a brand new book called When Santa Learned the Gospel. And today we meet the author, Simon Camilleri. Simon is an author, but he's also a biblical storyteller and entertainer who plays the piano, sings, writes comic poetry, does magic tricks, invents board games, and can juggle. And he joins me now. Please welcome Simon Camilleri. It's a rapturous welcome there, Simon. Yeah, welcome to Bigger Questions. Oh, I'm very happy to be here. It's excellent. Now, that's a wide range of activities that you do there. Is mm -hmm. there anything that you particularly like to do? It's very tricky. I've always had, I've always been a bit of a ma um, a jack of all trades, master of none, mm -hmm. and um, I get bored quickly. So I, I like to do a variety of things. But I guess all the above is, I like to use creative and entertaining things to help people think about big issues and big questions. Well, that's appropriate for us to be talking to you today then, um, because that's what you've done with this book, which we'll be talking about in a second. But to kick off bigger questions, we like to ask a couple of smaller questions. We do try to have a bit of fun on the show. Today, we're talking about Santa and the gospel. So Simon, mm -hmm. we thought we'd test you on how much you know about the song, Santa Claus is Coming to Town. Okay. Now, do you ever sing the song? Do I ever sing the song? Probably at local sort of community carols events when it's when it's playing, I, I, I now and then sing it. Yep. Okay, you don't hum it around the house? Not, not generally. Okay, no. right. Okay, well, we'll see how you go. There's two okay. questions, both yep. multiple choice. Question one. The song Santa Claus is Coming to Town was a Christmas song written in the 1930s for children. Yet versions of the song have been sung by a wide range of performers. Now, according to Wikipedia, which of the following performers has not sung a recording of Santa Claus is Coming to Town? Was it A? Adele, B, Andrea Bocelli, C, Miley Cyrus, or D, Danny Minogue. So it's A for Adele, B for Bocelli, C for Cyrus, or D for Danny. Which of those has not sung a recording of Santa Claus is Coming to Town? Oh, I'll go Adele. And you're right. Hey! Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. That was an easy one. Uh, now it, on. it seems as if you do want to produce a Christmas album, this song generally features on it. Yep. Question two. According to a 2012 BBC documentary, the song Santa Claus is Coming to Town ranked as the seventh richest song of all time in terms of royalties earned. What song was number one? The richest song of all time. Was it A, White Christmas, B, Happy Birthday, C, Pretty Woman, or D, Gangnam Style? Um, I'll, I'll go Happy Birthday. And that's a good one to go with because yep. that's correct. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, 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 I think in every movie they have to credit, whenever they sing Happy Birthday in a movie, they have to credit it. So someone's getting royalty somewhere. It is interesting there that there's three Christmas songs in the top ten. Um, so perhaps if you want to make a buck, then you mm. do a Christmas song or write a book about Christmas, perhaps? Yeah, yeah, that's the goal. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> so congratulations, Simon. In our smaller questions, you got two of our two smaller questions right. Mm. You got a 100%. Big round of applause. Oh, Thank you. Wow. Pretty good. So, Simon, Santa Claus is Coming to Town mm -hmm. is the seventh richest song of all time, ahead of Pretty Woman, Gangnam Style, and pretty much any other song that's ever been written. <laughs> Why do you think it's so popular? Oh, it's oh well. I I think it's popular. It's got a good tune, and um, and people love the the character of Santa, and especially in the West. Mm -hmm. Um, so I presume that's where the popularities come from. Yeah. Um, and and every year we hear it. So every year your children will hear that song at at carols events and um and school functions and things like that. And so that's partly why it uh you know was a launching pad for inspiring this book. Yeah, well, that's exactly right. And the book you've written and the book we're launching today, When Santa Learned the Gospels, is in some ways inspired by the song, yep. Santa Claus is Coming to Town. Can you tell us um, what happened? Share what happened. Well, back in 2013, I went to my local um, community Christmas carols in the park. And um, it was one of those ones where they had a big variety from, you know, songs about Santa and songs about uh, Jesus and all, all mixed in together. And um, coming to the end, the kids sitting around me I, were very excited by the idea of, that Santa would turn up 
um, at the event. And at the end, he did, right? And all the, he comes out there and goes, ho, 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 hello, kids, and everything. And, and the kids are all cheering and excited. And um, as, as the cliche goes, Santa up on the stage said, uh, so who here has been a good boy or girl this year? And all the kids went, me, me. And they all raised their hands very excitedly. And then I, I, I could tell he, he just thought he'd say this is a joke. And he went, well, and who here has been a naughty boy or girl this year? And all the kids went, me, me, me. <laughs> And raise their hands as well. And poor Santa didn't know what to do. He was sort of like, uh, uh, oh, well, uh, I guess you've tried to be good. Um, you know? and, and then he proceeded to just throw out presents to the kids and all that. And, and I just went, wow, that, what an interesting philosophy that is. You know, it doesn't, doesn't really matter. Everyone's just trying to be good and that's probably good enough. And I guess, you know, um, and yet still the message that uh, if you want a present, you have to be good, and if you weren't good, then you then you miss out on mm. presents and miss out on a gift. And I thought how I went home reflecting about how that is a bit of a parallel to how people think about God sometimes, mm -hmm. and how people think about oh, God just expects us to be to be good, and if we're good, then we'll get His favour and we'll get to go to heaven. Uh, and if we're on the naughty list, uh, there's only a very few people on that and they get the punishment. And mm. I thought how some people think that's what Christianity teaches. Mm. And also, if you're just kind of good enough, then it's kind of okay. Yeah, and, and, and so no one actually thinks they're really on the naughty list, you know, with God, just like kids don't think they're on the naughty list with Santa. And <laughs> um, so I, I was musing about the, the parallels. And um, so, so what, did, what did you do? You went, you went home? Yeah, I, I've got a blog, um, uh, which is simoncamilleri.com. And, and I, I wrote a poem called When Santa Learned the Gospel and uh, just thought of a funny idea of what if Santa was actually confronted by the message of the gospel and how it turns that message of if you're good, you get presents and if you're bad, you get punishment or coal, um, flips that upside down. Yeah. And I posted that and that was what I thought was going to be the end of it. Mm, so what happened? <laughs> um, you, well, you, posted, you posted the poem on your blog? Yeah, uh, nothing much happened that year. I posted on Facebook and as people do and, uh, and some people liked it. But then a year later, I reposted it. You're getting a bit desperate. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I just didn't want to write something new. <laughs> no, no, no. Bored, um, yeah. no, no. I, I, I reposted it for Christmas and and all of a sudden, it, it caught people's attention or interest, and it started to be shared. And uh, and I, I had about twenty thousand views, and wow. and then people were posting on their on their church websites and different things. And then I heard back that people were like reading it at their church's Christmas service, like on Christmas Day, they read it. And then other people were like, "We have to do this for our Christmas carols event next next year." and and it just really caught people's yeah interest, and, yeah. and that was really um, humbling. And so you thought you could make a buck out of this? That was the goal. No, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no I, I, um, I've always thought one day maybe I'd try to write a book and uh, climb that mountain, that challenge. And I realised this might be the perfect one to have a go at. Uh, and so that sort of inspired me to, to go on this huge journey. Terrific. Well, congratulations on the book as well. Now, let's just think about more of the song, Santa Claus is Coming to Town. It says that he's making a list, he's checking it twice, he's going to find out who's naughty or nice. Santa Claus is Coming to Town. I mean, what, what's the problem with that? I mean, it's one of the most popular songs of all time. <laughs> uh, on one level, it's not a, not a problem because everyone does have a sense of justice and right and wrong and expectation that, you know, there's a right way to live and a wrong way to live. But... Uh, I think that the message that can come across is the idea that only good people get presents and only bad people get punishment. And I think that's the, that's the danger of that song. I, I remember at, at, in my family's carols event, me and my brother, my younger brother, we'd always have a laugh about that song and say how it sort of sounds, if you just say the words, it sort of sounds a bit like the words for a trailer for a horror movie, you know? He sees you when you're sleeping. <laughs> he knows when you're awake. That sort of thing. Um, and and there's, a, sort of, there's an element of creepiness about it and um, this idea that he's looking over your shoulder and ready to punish you. And that's definitely not the message of what, how 
God is, and I, I worry that people relate the two. Well, there a lot of people do have that view that's what God is like. So then yeah. how specifically is the Christian gospel different to the message of Santa? Um, I think in two key ways, which I, I try to play with in the book. Um, one is this idea that uh, it's not just that there's bad people out there or there's people out there who have who have done wrong on the naughty list, but we're all right because we've tried. Um, the message of the gospel is actually at first a confronting message um, that we actually all need forgiveness, that we all need mercy, that we've all failed in different ways and not lived up to the standards of love that God has for all of us to have. Um, but at the same time, it has an incredible message of grace and forgiveness that's declared to all people who need it, um, that they're not written off, but they're, they're welcomed with open arms to come into relationship with God. Mm. So is that the gospel that you've talked about? So you, the, the, it's when Santa learned the gospel. So what exactly is this gospel? Uh, the word gospel means good news. Um, and the simplest way um, of explaining it is the gospel is the good news about Jesus, uh, the good news about who Jesus is and what he has done by dying for us on the cross to make that reconciliation with God possible. That's terrific. Okay. And so what were you hoping to achieve with the book then? Yes, lots of things. Um, I'm now a father of a very cute little two-year-old. Um, and as a father, I, I really care about sharing the gospel with my daughter and raising her with the gospel and sort of marinating our family in that good news. Mm -hmm. And so I'm looking for creative ways of sharing the gospel with her. Uh, and as a, as a new sort of parent, I now meet lots of other parents who are thinking about the same thing, wanting to know how to share it with their kids and, and get their kids thinking about who Jesus is and what he's done. Um, but also, I, I know lots of Christians are, are trying to have these conversations with other people and find that really awkward at times or difficult. And so this, this book is, a, a, I think, a fairly friendly way, a warm way of starting those conversations. Um, and even just from my journey, I've been able to have some of those conversations with people as I've shared the, the story with them. Um, yeah, hopefully it will open up a lot of conversations for people. Well, why don't you read it for us? I mean, but just before you start, just to clarify... That the book is about when Santa learned the gospel, not when Santa learned gospel. So it's not about Santa joining like a, a gospel choir, putting on robes and singing, is it? No, no, that's the sequel. Okay. No, 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 no. <laughs> when Santa learned gospel. So ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Simon Camilleri reading When Santa Learned the Gospel. Thank you. When Santa learned the gospel, he first heard it from an elf. This tiny Santa's helper had just learned of it herself. A child had asked for Christmas to receive a Bible book. This elf had made one in the shop, then paused to have a look. She read all about Jesus and the call to follow him. She learned how Jesus lived and taught and died to pay for sin. She learned how Jesus rose again and how he will return. And then this elf read how she should respond to all she'd learned. She shut the book put down her tools, then closed her eyes and prayed. Right then and there, this little elf trusted in Christ that day. The next day, she told Santa. It was awkward, unprepared. Uh, she knew she didn't know that much, but what she knew, she shared. She told Santa the gospel. It was simple, it was short, but a seed was sown in Santa's heart, which grew into a thought. Santa reflected on his life and the message he supported, then compared it to the gospel that the elf had just reported. He'd always thought that everyone was naughty or was nice. He had them all on two big lists. He even checked it twice. He'd always thought you only got a gift if you'd been good. The naughty kids got lumps of coal, that's what he understood. They'd all line up in shopping malls and sit upon his knee and claim that they were always nice, as nice as nice can be. Of course, he saw them when they slept and knew when they awoke. He also knew their nice attempts were pretty much a joke. Their heads weren't filled with thoughts as nice as kindness, peace and joy. 
but with the never-ending list of their desired toys. He knew their hearts, but he had thought, Oh, they're trying to be good. That's good enough to make the list, <laughs> otherwise no one would. So every year, they're good enough with toys would be rewarded. And every year, he realised, this message he supported. The good will get the presents, the bad will get the coal, and trying to be good enough is good enough a goal. That was the message that he knew, but now he knew another. He had just learned the gospel, so he compared them to each other. The message of the gospel turned his message upside down. The good, the bad, naughty and nice, it switched it all around. There's no one good but God alone, he'd heard Jesus concluded, and those who claim they're good enough are simply just deluded. If there's a list of who is good, that standard we've all missed. And Santa saw that even he was on the naughty list. That shook his world. That rocked his boat. That gripped him in his soul. To think that even Santa Claus deserved a lump of coal. But that was only half of what the gospel message said. It also flipped what happened to the naughty on its head. Instead of being written off as just not good enough, the message to the naughty list was one of grace and love. The gospel offered mercy to all those deserving coal. The gospel offered forgiveness and cleansing of the soul. The gospel told how Jesus died our death to pay the price, to reconcile us all to God both naughty and the nice. This offer was a real gift. Unlike presents neath the tree, it was not earned by being good. God offered it for free. Santa compared his message with this new one he had learned. His message said you get the presents your good deeds had earned. The message of the gospel offered something so much greater. Jesus had come to reconcile the world to their creator. When Santa grasped the gospel, he did not know what to do. And so the elf said nervously, uh, How about I pray with you? So that night at the North Pole, by the fire in his den, with a simple prayer led by an elf, Santa was born again. And now in Christ, forgiven, free, his new life had begun. And Santa had a new message to share with everyone. Well, congratulations on the book, Simon. It's, it's really well produced. It's beautifully illustrated, and I couldn't see any spelling mistakes. So um, do you have a favourite part? Uh, I do. I do. I, I love the part when the elf musters up the courage the next day to share the gospel. And I especially love the line, all credits to the author. Um, in, <laughs> uh, no, In all humility, that's <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, now, uh, the line where it says, she knew she didn't know that much, but what she knew, she shared. And just that encouragement to me to not feel like I have to be a great theologian or a great scholar to share what God has done in my life with others. So after Santa learned the gospel, do you think he'd want to change the words to his song, Santa Claus is Coming to Town? Oh, I don't know. He's, he's making a list. He's checking it twice. <laughs> He's now trusting in Christ's sacrifice. I don't know. No, no. I, I don't know. No. Well, you, maybe you could just sing that next yeah, time at the, at the next yeah. Christmas event. Yeah. yeah, I'll be kicked out, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. Now, in the book, the elf and the Santa come to learn and accept the gospel in, in quite different ways. 
Do you resonate more with the elf or with Santa in how you came to know the gospel yourself? Um, I think probably with Santa. Um, the elf just discovers a Bible, reads it, and uh, responds. Santa goes on a bit more of a philosophical journey for himself, thinking through his own um, his own philosophy, his own worldview, and how that clashes with the gospel. And I've gone on a bit of a journey. Uh, mm -hmm. Can you share, share a bit of your own personal journey? Uh, what happened when you learned the gospel? Yeah, well, I was, to some degree, brought up with the gospel. I, I always knew uh, if you asked me, why did Jesus die? I could answer, oh, he died for my sins. Um, but I didn't really know what that meant. And I hadn't personally engaged with what that meant for me. Um, and so probably in my, in my teens was the key time when I was sort of confronted to, to realize I had to respond. Mm -hmm. uh, like both the elf and, the, and Santa in the story, they, they got to a point where they realized they had to respond. It's not just a matter of they needed to learn the gospel, but they needed to, um, when they grasped it, they needed to do something. And so, um, yeah, it was in my teens when I really uh, had that moment, like the, uh, at the end. Like Santa. Yeah, where they sat down and prayed and, and I embraced what Christ had done for me. Mm, and so what difference has it made to you after making that decision? Uh, everything in the world. I, that's why when the story ends with him saying, now in Christ forgiven free, his new life had begun. And that's was my story too. Mm. Um, and he had a new message to share with everyone. And that was my story too. Uh, I had a, a passion in, and have always had a passion to share the gospel and share this good news with, with others in whatever creative way I can. And the greatest joy is really knowing that I'm forgiven and knowing Christ as my friend and my Lord and my Savior and that just being a part of my life every day. Mm, makes a big difference to you as you live day by day. Absolutely. Mm. We're asking Simon Camilleri today's big question, what happened when Santa learned the gospel? And the Bible helps answer this question. In the Gospel of Luke, which is one of the four biographies of Jesus' life that we have, Jesus shares a short story or a parable to some who were confident of their own righteousness and looked down on everyone else. So Simon, as we reflect on this, this parable, is the audience of this parable important as we read it? Yeah, I, I definitely think so. The, I think it's written to, I think it says in the, in the passage that it's written to those who had confidence in their own righteousness. That's right, Confidence yeah. that they're, basically, uh, to use the analogy of the book, confidence that they are on the nice list, yep. um, uh, that they were right with God. And so Jesus is telling this parable to really challenge them. Because they're expecting their presence. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, Jesus shares that two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood by himself and prayed, God, I thank you that I am not like other people, robbers, evildoers, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week and give a tenth of all I get. So according to Sanders philosophy, this Pharisee, this religious leader, should get all the presents, shouldn't he? He sounds good. He's kept all the rules. Yeah, he's definitely on the naughty list, and he's the, the, very the, comfortable the, in... Oh, the, the nice oh, sorry, list. on the nice list, yeah. uh, in his eyes at least, and he's very comfortable pointing out people who are on the naughty list. Yeah, yeah. And so then we meet the tax collector who is on the, the naughty list, mm. who approaches the temple quite differently, though. Mm. He says, but the tax collector stood at a distance. He would not even look up to heaven, but beat his breast and said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. So, Simon, he's a sinner, the naughty list, he should be getting coal, shouldn't he? Uh, yeah, he should be. Um, and that's what he expects. You know, he seems to know that he's done wrong and he's aware of his own, he's got great self-awareness yeah. um, uh, and he doesn't compare himself to anyone other than God. And so he should be, but that's why I think this story is surprising. So what do you then find surprising about Jesus' conclusion? To the parable, which he says, I tell you that this man, the tax collector, rather than the other, the Pharisee, went home justified before God. That doesn't seem right, though, does it? No, and, and the word justified is sort of a legal term. It's, it's basically saying he went home innocent before God. And that's ridiculous, you know, because he's not innocent before God. No. And, and so he, it's basically he's, he's been welcomed by God and he told this parable in a way so it would be surprising to them because mm. uh, what you expect is that the good person 
uh, or the person who has done generally good things should be right with God, and the person who has done bad things, and even if they can acknowledge it, they shouldn't be right with God, but that's how the gospel flips it upside down. So why is, how did this ha- flip happen? Uh, I, think, I think it's because, uh, as Jesus concludes that parable, um, those who are humbled will be exalted, and yep. those who exalt themselves will be humbled. Um, that that's what God does, is that if we think we're right with him and we can't acknowledge that we actually need forgiveness, uh, that's, they're the people who get humbled by God, uh, and those who can acknowledge that they need forgiveness, um, they're the ones who can embrace the free gift of forgiveness that Jesus offers. Mm. As, I, as I said, he does conclude by saying, for all those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. So how does this relate to your book? Um, yeah, I, I love that parable. That's probably my favourite parable. Um, and I think it's a beautiful image of the two. And this book's all about the two, the, the naughty list and the nice list. And the, um, in that parable, uh, we clearly see someone who's on the naughty list who gets welcomed and offered forgiveness. And someone who's on the nice list, oh, thinks they're on the nice enough list, um, who gets humbled. So uh, it's a fun parable. Mm, and there's a reversal of expectations. Absolutely. And that's what you're trying to play with in the book. Yeah. Yeah. So Simon, where can people get the book? Um, you can get it probably in a few places, but uh, the website for the book is sanagospel.com. And so that's a place where you can find out a little bit more of the story as well. And um, you can get in contact with me um, or you can buy a book there. So Simon... What happened when Santa learned the gospel? What happened? Well, his world and his whole life got flipped upside down. For the better? For the better, (laughs) absolutely. Well, well, the story ends. Who knows what happens to him after? Uh, We'll have to write the sequel. (laughs) (laughs) Let me leave you with the Bible's answer to today's big question. What happened when Santa learned the gospel? From Luke 18.14. All those who exalt themselves will be humbled and those who humble themselves will be exalted. I look forward to you joining us next time for Bigger Questions. Please thank our guest today, Simon Camilleri. Enjoy Bigger Questions? You can help us keep asking them for as little as $1 a podcast. Support the show. Go to patreon.com slash bigger questions.